Hey, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have a conversation from the afterlife with David Bowie. We're going to talk about the new year, which is 2022, and kind of get a vibe on maybe some things that he can give us a reflection on from the previous year and stepping into the new. Let's see. I've done a couple of these, and I'm not sure... They've been unique, so so we'll see what David has to share with us. It's been a while since we've talked. Can you come on in close? He's so creative, you guys. I love his vibe. I love his vibe. He's so creative. He is. Okay. All right. So, hello, David. Yeah. He says, yes, it's been a while. Yes, it has. <laughs> he says to me, why, are, why didn't you do personal channeling with me? I'm like, um, maybe we can offer that in the new year because I had a lot of requests for them <laughs> for the holidays. I'm, I'm done with those now. Um, but okay, in the new year, maybe we'll do some David Bowie private channel. <laughs> okay, okay. He definitely would have a lot to offer. You would really be a good fit, actually, for the new year. Yeah, you would be. You would be. And that's why I wanted to um, have a conversation with you a little bit about what, not, not necessarily prediction, David, about like what we can expect in the, or what, what is going to happen in the new year, like things that are kind of set. But what parameters are we operating under as we step into a new year, okay? Let us know that, <laughs> okay? What parameters are we operating under right now? Okay, I'm recording this in December of 2021. We are going to be talking about 2022. I'm not sure when I'm actually going to share this video. It might be in January. We'll see. So well, it might already be in 2022 when you're here. So, But what are the parameters we're stepping into this year with? What can you give us? He shows me a mandala, a sacred geometry symbol. I've seen that with somebody else too. I can't remember who showed that to me. The flower of life is what I saw. But with you, it looks more like a lotus energy, energetically, like a sacred geometry shape, a mandala that's formed into a lotus, which is a beautiful metaphor. Beautiful. It really, for me, it evokes um, health and wellness. It evokes opening opportunity, personal growth. It evokes taking care of oneself. It evokes opening within, um, awakening, a lot of different kinds of things, okay? So beautiful, thank you for that. Did you receive that? Mm -hmm. Let's make a note that David is also very astral and star energy aligned. And so because of the end of this year, there's been so much, at the end of 2021, there's been so much galactic energy that's present and people that are normal people are talking about it and starting to be like, huh, not just life on other planets, but the idea of spirit guides that are star aligned. So I prefer to call them star energies or star guides, and it just feels way more palatable for the brain for people, I think. Um, but David is definitely aligned with that. So if you're Pleiadian, Arcturian, Cirrus, uh, whatever um, lineage or alignment you have, either past previous life, past or previous lifetimes or future lifetimes, just know that that's part of the energy here too. So there's some star energy with David, of course. So we nod to that, which is probably why the Lotus comes in because sacred geometry is the best way to translate that energy into the human context. Okay. And to see it in the human form, because it shows up in sacred geometry, shows up in nature and in our bodies and all of that. So mm -hmm. very good. He says, ah, oh, very good. He said, just kind of nodded at me like, yes, he's drinking tea, by the way. He says, we have to keep our minds sharp. You have to stay sharp. What do you mean by that? So as we step into the new year in 2022, we need to be sharp. What do you mean by that? He says the mind is it's really important to get the mind caught up he says you've mentioned before in previous videos he says that with others you've spoken with that there's been a collective tragedy basically a tragedy uh, collective pain he says collective pain that is shared by all everyone that's in a human body feels this he says it's like a it's not he doesn't show it as a wound he's showing it as a void like a canyon, like two, two um, big rock outcroppings, like bluffs. And then in the middle, there's like this gorge. It's like that, like that's what we have. 
And that's why he says that feels like things are very divisive and separate. And he says, but that was starting to form, that division was starting to come forward before this experience, the collective experience of the, the uh, pandemic. Before that, he says it was already starting to happen. And he says, but the reason for it to happen, for a split to happen is so that something can come out of it. It's like a birth, you guys. It's like you have to open up in order to get the stuff that's inside, right? You have to open the gift, right? And, or, okay, literally, okay, oh, I don't want to be too graphic for people, but it literally looks like, a, like it feels like this birthing experience, like the birth canal, okay? Like you're coming through this, this incredible time of personal growth. And it's almost like the savage, like coming through the, the jungle and getting out into the open. And wow, there's land and op just openness and there's like hills and there's just greenery and it's, you can see the sky. And where, when you're in the forest and you're going through this kind of savage jungle, you can't see what is above you and what is watching over you and what is hovering over you. And because there's this canopy, which, which has protected you. Oh, I need a tissue, just a second, you guys. Oh, morning, cold. <laughs> you can't see, it's like this canopy above you, like the earth and the trees have protected you, yet at the same time, it has deprived you of light. So there's been too much of the protection and of the, oh no, I'm afraid of the light and kind of a thing. And like, oh, I gotta get away. And all this like awareness of just what's right next to you kind of a thing and the, the things around you. And now you're coming into this openness where you might feel vulnerable is what you're showing me. You might feel really vulnerable. First, you're excited about it. Like, yay, like openness, <gasps> opening. <gasps> yay, I can see, I can stretch, I can move. Oh yeah, it's great. And then it's like, um, wait a minute. There's no covering. The sun is pretty bright. I'm by myself. Uh, the trees aren't super close to me. Everything's far away right now. It's wide open. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? That's the vibe he's giving me. <laughs> wow. Very, with David, it's easy to be clairvoyant. So if you want to work on your third eye, have David help you. And he literally shows me a triangle over the third eye, like a triangle with an eye in the middle. Sweet. So, okay, thank you. All right, thank you for that. My nose is just itchy, 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 itchy. So, there's a lot, he's showing me a lot of stuff. Okay, can we, we need to slow down just a little bit because I need to be able to uh, translate and articulate it to people so that they can know. You guys can do this yourself too. So if you're um, working on your psychic gifts, Feel the clairvoyant channel with David right now. Open up your third eye and let yourself kind of process and receive some of the images that he's sharing because he's sharing in pictures right now. So keeping your mind sharp is going to be important. He says, the wisdom that is needed from the mind or what the, how the mind can source you is to be able to provide clarity in the imagery, he says. So it works with the third eye, yes, with the psychic sight but it brings through the channel much more clearly what truly is up, what truly is going on. So you've asked for things to be separated so you can see, he says, not separated because everything, people don't get along and everybody's angry and you're better and you're worse and, and um, you have to pick a side kind of a thing. He's saying, it's not, it's not that, it's not about separateness, it's about openness. It's not about division, it's about openness, creating space so that people can actually um, know for themselves what's up with themselves, right? And he says, it's definitely a time that we're entering in 2022 to better know yourself. And there's gonna be opportunities for you to express and experience different aspects of yourself. And he says, so it's a good time to try different things, to get out of your comfort zone, to acknowledge that you haven't been all that comfortable anyway. So it's an opportunity to try different foods, Maybe take different classes, maybe just take a, learn a new language, maybe move, maybe go to a place um, on an experience that you haven't been before, whether it's locally, like drive to a different park if you go on walks and draw, walk there, or go on vacation at different kinds of places that you wouldn't normally go to or haven't been for a while, he says, because the opportunity to rekindle the 
the sparks inside you is going to come through newness, come through the new, you know what? You're not the first one that said new. Somebody else that I channeled said new, like, I think it was Robin Williams that said for 2022, that there's a new, like new, like that's the word or that's the energy or that's what we can focus on. I think it was, I think it was Robin Williams or it was Stephen Hawking. One of the two, because that's who I've channeled uh, about this topic. I don't know, again, when I'm sharing this video, I don't know what the timing is. If I've already shared those or not, I have no idea. Because I don't know how I'm going to share these. So that's the same. That's interesting. That's interesting. So it's about rekindling that spark inside us based upon the new things that we're experiencing. And, and or he says, you can experience old, old things or normal things, routines and patterns in a new way, in a different way. You can, do, you can go to the gym, for example, and you can do something different there. You could take a different type of exercise class. You can maybe go to the sauna after. Like there's different things you can do for just experiences. It's not that complicated. Or if you always order the same thing at the coffee shop, try something different, you know, add something different, that kind of a thing. Um, it's, it can be really subtle. And he says that the more experiences that you can have in your body, you're in, in introducing the sensory um, stimulus that is needed. And it's sensory stimulus in a positive way. He says that you are guiding and making through choice instead of receiving by force. So we're having sensory experiences by choice instead of by force. Can you talk about that? Sensory experiences by choice instead of by force. Did you hear that? That's a huge thing for empaths. You and I, it's a huge thing. So having sensory experiences by choice and not by force, talk about that a little bit. He says, it has been the context to be able to feel and sense energy through the heart. You call this empath. We just say through the heart, energetically, right? that has caused a pattern of overwhelm that is consistent and creates the vigilance or the hypervigilance that makes the dramatic experience worse. He doesn't use the word trauma. That's interesting. He's not using the word trauma. He's using the word drama. Very interesting. Very interesting. I find that curious. Okay. 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 Just a minute. Sorry. One of my, my kids just texted me. I just got a text from my, oops. One of my kids distracted. Sorry. Okay. Focus, focus, focus. Okay. Use the word drama instead of trauma. Talk about that. Everything is amplified. He says, um, in the senses and the sensory center is the heart because that's the foundation for what you know as a human is emotions because emotions can evoke action. Aside from the mind or the brain doing it, the heart can do it through emotion. And that's how it negotiates with the mind to get things done, accomplished. That could actually help the soul, your spirit. Sometimes misguided or not totally informed with all the information, the heart overwhelmed and overworked in its psychicness, in its processing of the sensory information can jump the gun or be impulsive, he says, impulsive. And that causes chaos and drama, which creates a reiteration or an affirmation. He says a, re a confirmation. He says re a lot, re, 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 re. A confirmation of the negative patterns, the patterns that are survival instinct and protecting you and, and keeping you safe and acknowledging that people are bad in general and everybody wants something from you and nobody really is out for your greater good. And this almost paranoia kind of vibe in the heart. And that's what's creating the overwhelm that's collectively affecting everyone. And he says, it's dramatic. It's dra dramatizing what is just raw and pure. He says, emotion is raw and pure and it's designed to support the sensory processing of energy and not designed to guide or direct or be the only leader or the decision maker or to manipulate the brain into doing things. And that is where the conflict is inside between the mind and the heart. It is a constant challenge, and he said. So the new year is presenting an opportunity to clear these, clear out the distrust between the mind and the heart, to allow a deeper understanding, more broader context of 
what's really happening in the heart. So for the empaths, what's really happening here needs to be coming from a force of compassion and dry, driven by compassion that is so ingrained in yourself, in your geometry, that you won't entertain the concept of negative other people and everybody wants a piece of me and all this. If something feels bad, go inside and find out where it is feeling bad, not the why. It's not about diagnosing, he says. It's not about diagnosing so you can label something and then put it on a shelf. It's about finding out the, the what, where is this inside me and what can I do to allow this feeling of vigilance, this reaction to be a strategic, supportive, promoting, encouraging energy that is part of a wholeness and not individualized and lashing out, but as a whole broader context of a strategy of how you process feeling and energy and sensory information and not confusing the two because emotions are very much a part of the human experience. And the sensory piece is designed to help you understand the emotion so that everything belongs, not to create drama or chaos by one rogue emotion or feeling, but to create understanding about what is happening inside here. What is happening? Because there's a message about me that is coming forward that I'm ignoring because I'm so focused on what's happening out here. So I'm paranoid about Susie screwing up something. So I take over and take care of it. Or Janice is having drama and Janice always has the drama. And so I have to listen to her vent. Where's this coming from? And why am I so angry about it? Why am I so annoyed by it? Why didn't I just let her do her thing while I'm doing something else inside? Oh, 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 you don't actually have to listen. We're really good at not listening to ourselves. Why do we practice not listening to other people when they're just venting? And they can just clarify, oh, you're venting. Okay, go ahead, you vent. I'll set a timer. I mean, be funny about it, use humor, do things to help you get through those experiences, but don't jump into the drama. If you buy into her venting and you get all upset about her venting, what you're doing is taking on her venting as, it's, as if it's your own and you're buying the energy of the venting and you're swimming in it and it's dramatic and it has nothing to do with you. If it feels like too much, it's because you are too attached externally and not connected internally. And he's saying, get into your body, get in your body. If you want to do make an impact for 2022, mm -hmm. get sharper in your mind, but be in your body. If your soul is in your body, it's going to support your heart. If your spirit, your intuition, this is David Bowie sharing this. If your spirit and intuition is in your body, if you essence, your essence is in your body, it's going to support your heart and your mind. And they're going to work together better because that's a point. The heart and the mind working together in 2022 is the common theme that he's bringing forward. Mm -hmm. What else we got? What you got, Mr. Mr. David Boy? Yeah, strategy. He brings up the word strategy. Interesting, sharp and strategy. Okay, what talk to me about strategy? He says it's not what you think, but there are some goals. It would be worthwhile for you to consider or contemplate goals. This will help the mind get on board with what the spirit wants and what the heart is desiring. He says, your heart is where your desire is. He said, as you step into this new year collectively, and he's saying, I'm speaking broadly. So for you as an individual, your energy centers may be aligned differently and just acknowledge that. And he says, just know that. But collectively, it's in your heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whoa. Okay. 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 So you're suggesting that we make goals, which is interesting haven't done goal studying for a long time. He says, not the old necessarily pattern. You can start there with how you've known how to create goals, like when you're doing a project plan or something like that. Um, he says, and you can use the spiritual concepts of setting intention to manifest and goal setting with the mind to work together to create a hybrid version of goal setting. But he says, um, it would provide a structure. And so here's what we're gonna do, you guys. Oh my gosh, I should just do a little class on this. We're gonna do a approach. 
four pillars. If you work with me in private session, I use four pillars as a lot of ways to structure things, to organize my psychic readings, to help to create safe and sacred space for you, a tool that you can use for card readings for yourself, a tool you can use to connect with your four spirit guides, the primary ones that are supporting you, and with a platform of light, uh, platform of light below, a canopy of light above to help with the energies, okay, to create a safe container. But he literally shows me four, like four pillars or four, goals or four points of, what do you can say? Four points of purpose <gasps> and power. Oh my God, I love this. We should do a class on this. <gasps> if you want me to do something like that, let me know, put it in the comments below. Of course, you're gonna have to pay for that because I'm a really good life coach and extremely good motivational speaker and a very good teacher. Also, anyway, um, Four points of power, purpose and power. Yeah. Okay. So how do we do that? We would do that in a way where we would probably do some kind of a connection to self and then create four points of power that are centered in our purpose. Not a purpose that we have to identify or articulate, but that we have to feel into and know. So you are the center. So there's really a fifth point. There always is, you know, earth, air, fire, water, light. Yeah, of course there's always a fifth point. It's you, lovey, it's you. All right, that's a Bridget thing. That was me, I just did that. That wasn't David. Um, but he loves, he sparks my creativity. Doesn't he spark yours? Oh my gosh, I hope you can feel that ideas flowing. I can't, okay. So you are in the center. So your purpose, just feel your purpose. You don't have to articulate it or know it exactly. Just feel connected to yourself. The purpose is to be in your body. <laughs> to be your full self? Yeah, do that. Click in, be the center pillar. And there's four pillars of light around you encompassing and enfolding you to create safe and sacred space as you step into the new year. And so they're power points, points of power, not to be confused with the actual software. PowerPoint, yeah, points of power, <laughs> okay. That is brilliant. Do you like that, you guys? Do you like it? Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. That's the kind of stuff people charge a lot of money for. You got it for free. So you have to have some kind of strategy. Maybe start sharp, have some kind of strategy, a little bit of goal setting in a creative and unique way that fits or suits you. You don't have to do it on paper. You can do it in a collage. You can do it in painting. You can do it in sketching. You can do it in your journal. You can do it with an altar space outside. Uh, you can do it any way you want to do it. There's no rules. There's no rules. We're creative, right? Is there anything else? He says, the foundation of lack is going to be shaken. The concept, the collective consciousness around abundance, money, prosperity, the haves and the have nots kind of vibe that has separated. The reason why it's separated so much and there's such a dramatic awareness of it is because we have to be open now to it. We get to be open. We've asked for an awakening and awareness. So we're coming through that spot. And now we don't know what to do because everything's revealed, right? That's what he's showing me. But he's saying specifically lack, financial, prosperity, and abundance. He says, you have to stay with it because the first six months of 2022 feel very rocky financially. I'm not suggesting there's not a, a, a fear-based energy he's bringing forward. He's just being the awareness forward. Okay. So rocky financially, which could mean um, globally or in your community or at your workplace, et cetera. Don't be afraid. Just be aware and make smart choices accordingly, right? Mm -hmm. So like prices, things like, we already are seeing this, you guys. It's not, it's not a surprise. This isn't a surprise. This isn't like a major prediction. Um, but he said the first six months of 2022, it's gonna continue that way. Six to eight months, actually six dash eight, he shows me. So six would be June, eight would be what? Um, August, first six to eight months of the year. All right, but nothing different. It's not different than what it's been, it's just, everybody's aware of it. Don't freak out. He's like, if you choose the drama of the fear, then you're going to go down to the spiral and you're going to lose your, I was just going to swear there. You're going to lose your stuff about it. You're going to lose more money because you're going to be worried and you're going to make decisions based on fear financially. And it's not going to help you. Okay. No, 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 no. Empowered decisions based on what feels right in alignment for you, your family, your life, not what you're told 
from one podcast, not what you learn from one book, not what you hear on one newscast, the collective energy of what you know inside you as what is best for you at this time. That's it. Simple. So the lack energy is coming up to help shift this common theme, core theme of not enough and value, self-worth, self-worthiness, self-worth and worthiness, self-worth and worthiness. Yeah, interesting. I've been working on, and that just came up to, for me again, actually in meditation this morning, I'm just going to tell you all my personal stuff, guys. Just enjoy it. came up for me in meditation again, this, this feeling of not enough and worthiness. And I'm like, whoa, deep. I'm like, whoa, I thought I've been working on that pretty good. I feel like I'm pretty good at that. And yet here it comes up again, another layer. I'm like, whoa, another layer, not to screw you up or take you off track, but just to give you awareness. So the and not enoughness and the worthiness and the self not feeling as confident in yourself maybe, or having self-esteem stuff, that's gonna be amplified, continue to be amplified. It's already been amplified. It's already been very amplified. Let's be clear, honest, it's already been amplified. But he's showing me that it's gonna to continue to be amplified for six to eight months. He's like, oh no, no, Bridget, nine to 11 months. It's gonna be like the whole year and I, oh no, 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 11 months, nine to 11. Oh my gosh, you guys, sorry. Self-esteem is gonna challenge everyone at different degrees, worthiness, self-worth, value. You're going to experience this with other people, you know, maybe with friends or your loved ones at work, people being concerned about not getting enough recognition or accolades because they really, it's a worthiness issue. Notice that for yourself, how much feedback you need. Do you need more feedback? Are you feeling a little more needy? That's because there's a self-worthiness piece that has to be addressed and it can be addressed most often through Compassion and self-love, compassion and self-love, compassion and self-love, the heart. So amplify the heart, not dramatically, but understanding that this lack thing, this financial lack thing, external economy thing is also affecting you in the heart with your own personal value and self-esteem issues. And it is digging at your self-esteem a little bit, okay? This is natural. We're gonna move through it. It's a healing time. Healing. So you're trying to tell me I should be offering more stuff for empaths and people to help work on their self-esteem because maybe that would be a good income source for me. <laughs> We're just going to start making some money. We're just going to have to get a J-O-B in the 2022s. It's been a lean year. Let's just say that. Not a bad thing. Just a fact. See, it affects me too, people. It affects me too. Wow, thanks, David. This has been a channeling session with David Bowie in the afterlife for 2022 as we step into 2022. So I may share this in January. I might share this in December, I'm not sure. So you'll get this as part of, let's talk about the new year. What's up with our channeling topics, okay? Thanks so much for watching Above Life Channel. I hope I've inspired your spirit and filled you with hope this is my merch if you're interested in the merch check it out below there's descriptions also below with the things that i utilize for my work and things tools and things that i i recommend to folks you can also check me out at above life or uh where am i above life channel youtube fairy grasshopper youtube i had to think for a minute because i've been talking so casual with you guys Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube, where I talk about all things intuitive. I talk about my psychic life. I have a vlog over there. I talk about intuitive top topics. I use card decks to show you how to do that for yourself. I don't use those usually in session, but I use them as a tool to help you. And I use them for myself as a tool because they give you clarity and they're easy. And I have a ton of them. So I share that with you. We also do intuitive top topics. I do some other channeling there. I might channel an archangel there or a spiritual guide or deity over there. So check out Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. If you're not there, you're missing out. If you want to get to know me better also, and my work, build a rapport with me, check me out on Fairy Grasshopper YouTube. I'm also on Instagram at Bridget Inspired. And if you want a book session with me, it is easy to book. I have a booking link on my, uh, my, my Facebook page, Bridget Inspired, and it's linked below. All right. So remember, the purpose of this work is to encourage you to live your life. This is your life after all. And David Bowie just gave you great insight about 2022. And you get to live it then, okay? Now you get to live it. Step in and live it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.